In this video we will play a consultation between Richard who is a 65-year-old patient who was recently diagnosed with prostate cancer and between his urologist. We will focus on the concept of active surveillance which implies watching the cancer without treatment. We will discuss who is suitable for this approach and whether it is safe. Good morning, Richard. I am sorry to learn that you have been diagnosed with a Gleason 6 prostate cancer which is also now classified as a grade group one, and we will discuss how to manage this today. I am happy to take any questions from you first, and then we could dive deeply into the answers. Okay, thank you, doctor. What is a grade group and how many grade are there for prostate cancer? A grade group is a measure of how aggressive the cancer cells are. Overall, there are five grades of prostate cancer. Grade one is the lowest and least aggressive grade, and grade 5 is the most aggressive as shown in this table. Okay, doctor, what is the Gleason score of 6 then and why there are two classifications? The Gleason score is an overall number that is made of adding two numbers together. The first number represents the grade of the most common type of cancer cells in the sampled tissue that is examined under the microscope, and the second number represent the grade of the second most common type and by combining both numbers, you get the overall Gleason score. This system was developed by Dr. Donald Gleason in the 1960s. He based the grades on how abnormal the cancer cells look compared to normal prostate cells. So for grade 1, the cells look almost like normal prostate cells, and for grade 5, the cells look very different from normal prostate cells as shown here. Grade 1 and 2 are considered benign, and grade 3 or above are considered malignant. The grade group has now replaced the Gleason grade, as doctors think the grade group is a more accurate way to grade prostate cancer cells. This table shows the comparison between Gleason score and the grade groups. Okay, thank you, doctor. This is very informative, and I now understand that my Gleason score 6 means grade group 1 prostate cancer. Now, I am interested in knowing what treatment options I have and whether it is okay to just watch the cancer. Certainly, Richard. Your cancer is a grade group 1, which is considered a low-risk prostate cancer, and in those cases, you have many treatment options, including active surveillance, surgery, or radiotherapy. Overall, I strongly recommend active surveillance in your case. Okay, thank you, doctor. What is active surveillance? Active surveillance entails watching your cancer closely with the aim of offering treatment and curing the cancer if there are any signs of progression in the future. But until then, we aim to delay the treatment as much as possible to spare you the side effects of surgery or radiotherapy. Okay, how is active surveillance done? There are many active surveillance protocols, but most involve doing a regular PSA blood test for example, three monthly, as well as a regular MRI scans of the prostate, usually yearly, as well as a repeat prostate biopsy after a one year of the initial diagnosis and three yearly thereafter to ensure that the cancer cells are not becoming more aggressive or the volume of cancer is not becoming larger. Okay, doctor, I like the idea of active surveillance, but I am concerned that the cancer might spread while I am on surveillance. Is it safe to just watch the cancer without any treatment? This is very understandable and does drive many patients on active surveillance to choose radical treatment like surgery or radiotherapy due to the anxiety that active surveillance causes them. There is a large amount of evidence in the literature regarding the safety of active surveillance. This includes a large Canadian cohort study where 993 men with low or intermediate risk prostate cancer were followed up for around 15 years. There were 15 deaths, 1.5%, from prostate cancer. The 10 and 15 year cause specific survival rates were 98.1% and 94.3%, respectively. An additional 13 patients, 1.3%, developed metastatic disease. At 5, 10, and 15 years, 75.7%, 63.5%, and 55.0% of patients remained untreated and on surveillance. This shows that the majority of patients who chose surveillance remained on active surveillance 15 years down the line. These data are very encouraging, doctor. 
and it shows me that active surveillance seems to be safe for low-risk prostate cancers like mine. Are there any other studies comparing active surveillance with radical treatment? Yes, there are some trials and studies comparing surveillance with radical treatment. The available data suggest that outcomes in appropriately selected males with localized prostate cancer who are managed with initial observation appear to be similar to those undergoing immediate definitive therapy. The best evidence in support of us comes from the PIVOT trial for which long-term results are available. This study randomly assigned 731 males with localized prostate cancer to upfront radical prostatectomy, which is surgery to remove the whole prostate versus delayed initial treatment, and reported that after 22 years of follow-up, surgery had only a very small impact on reducing death from any cause. The cancer mean survival in the surgery group was 13.6 versus 12.6 years in the delayed treatment group. When the analysis was restricted to males with low-risk disease, the benefit of surgery was much smaller, with no appreciable difference in mortality between those who had surgery and those who were initially observed. Notably, the risk of dying from a non-prostate cancer cause in PIVOT was higher than in many other prostate cancer studies, and because of this the results should be interpreted with caution because they may not reflect outcomes in a healthy population. Okay, thank you, doctor. I am more and more convinced that surveillance is the right strategy for me. I have heard of the PROTECT trial, which was conducted in the UK. Could the data from that trial apply to me? Yes, this could be applied to you to some extent, but the patients in the PROTECT trial were monitored less stringently than patients who are put on active surveillance, and therefore the results should be interpreted with caution. The PROTECT trial randomly assigned over 1,600 males to active monitoring, surgery, or radiation. In this trial, there were only a limited number of prostate cancer-related deaths in any of the groups, and there was no significant difference in the 15-year cancer-specific survival or all-cause mortality among the three treatments. The development of metastases was significantly more frequent in patients managed with active monitoring. However, it is likely that these results were driven by the over 20% of males with intermediate to high-risk disease who were randomized to the observation arm. Unfortunately, the PROTECT trial was not powered appropriately for subgroup analyses, so a focused evaluation of low-risk patients was not possible. But you could perhaps infer the outcome for low-risk cases like yours. If the mortality for a higher-risk group in the monitoring arm was similar to surgery or radiotherapy, you would expect at least the same for low-risk patients like yourselves. Thank you, doctor. This is very helpful. What if my cancer was more aggressive than grade group 1? Would I still be eligible for active surveillance? Active surveillance could be offered to a selected patients with grade group 2 disease. For example, if they have less than 10% pattern 4 on the Gleason grading, and if the prostate-specific antigen, PSA, was less than 10 nanogram per milliliter, and they have low disease extent on imaging and low extent of tumor in the biopsies less than or equal to 3 positive cores with Gleason score 3 plus 4, and less than or equal to 50% cancer involvement per core. People who go on surveillance with higher grade group accept the potential increased risk of metastatic progression. Patients with grade group 3 disease should be excluded from active surveillance protocols. Thank you, doctor. I am now very clear on what active surveillance entails its safety and the required tests needed to assure me that I am on the right track as time goes by. You are welcome. I will request for you to have a PSA blood test every three months for the next year, an MRI scan in one year, and I will give you a call in three months' time after your next PSA to see how you are getting on. Thank you, doctor. I feel well looked after and happy with this approach. This is the end of the video. I hope you found this video educational, and you now know the indications for active surveillance and the evidence of its safety in the literature. If you liked the video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to help grow the channel.